All right, guys, welcome to another coaching session for Environment Art. This is the second part of a video series that we're making. If you want to see the first part, go check. I put a link, a link in the description where you can see it. And this is the result of Guillermo's work after the feedback. And it's looking, it's looking quite nice. It's looking quite nice. Now, you may be at this point tempted to add more details into your scene like you're already feeling like your scene is just you know looking good it's it's working but there are a couple of things i want to give you some tips that you can make in your scene to make it look better so let's talk about the silhouette so the first thing is that the silhouette is created by lights and shadows and you have your lights here this is beautiful Beautiful lighting that is happening here. All this really, really nice. There's also a directional line that is happening thanks to this rock, which is pointing us pointing us into this direction, right? However, here is a little bit dark. And one way to try our composition, I'm going to put a post-process volume. So I'm going to go to the green plus icon, go to basic, uh, actually visual effects, post process. I'm going to go to unbound, click on check, and I'm going to go for saturation. And this saturation, I'm going to put it back to zero. So everything is black and white. The next thing I'm going to do is to go for my skylight. And I'm going to put the intensity to Actually, uh, I just gonna click here so you can see my shadows are like really harsh. And in my directional light, I'm just gonna go ahead and indirect lining intensity, we're gonna put to zero. So we don't have like a very, you know, so fog, we can turn it off. We can turn off the fog. And the sky atmosphere probably can turn that off as well. I'll leave it on for now. Just the directional light. Just put the indirect line in intensity. And you can go ahead and put something like 10, for example. And 50. Okay, and also I'm going to... Uh, this one I'm not going to change, to be honest. Let's just leave it like that. So what you see here... Let me just go back to the value that it had before, 0.1. Uh, what you will see here, it's basically... Um, actually, I can go to my post process. And I can go to my contrast. There you go, contrast. And I go, gonna go ahead and pump those values. So what you can see here is that my... I'm going to make this window up you can see that i do have my whites in this area my whites in this area this area and this area and the rest of the scene is pretty dark now you may not see the darkness if you know you put all the lights because not everything is fully dark but under the need uh, behind the scenes like this is your composition it's pretty much very dark and a lot of whites so what we're gonna do is actually go back and turn off this post process we don't need it anymore and also go back to our directional light and increase the indirect lining intensity and increase the exponential height fog and the skylight so you can see how hard it is to spot our design matrix that's the name of this so First things first, I feel like I can get rid of one of those. Uh, let me just post process volume. Uh, I feel like I could get rid of one of those. Yeah, like I feel like this rock, the silhouette is really flat. Just like here. And as soon as I, because now that I know my lights are really, really low. By removing this, I'm gonna I'm gonna just delete it, and you will see that I have some lights here. 
Let me take a look at this if I really... I think this one we can keep it. I think this one we can keep it. And maybe we can move it a little bit to the to the right. Just like that. Actually, here is is fine. It's uh, it's a nice angle. Let me try to remove it. Okay. Just trying to see, like, if this part. Yeah, we're gonna keep it. Another thing is this silhouette here. Now, if you see the silhouette, it's basically this thing that is in this area, and. For silhouettes, you really want to have interesting shapes. So what I recommend is just to play with this a little bit. Maybe something like this. And this will also give you a little bit more lights in your scene. It's actually giving us some rain lights here in this area, which is really nice. Okay, so... We can go ahead and just change this. Whenever you're working with natural environments, it's always a good idea to remove the snapping. And also try rotating around. Ah, no, not, not really. We can also try scaling this by multiplying by minus one. Not much. Not much change for now, so we're gonna try to see if this silhouette is a little bit more interesting. Okay, we can try and move these ones. Okay, and now we have like a different type of shape where it's something like this and then you go for something like this. Okay, so even like this when you want to create more tension you can even move this a little bit to the left so that these two lines create a lot of tension so that your eye is stuck in this area. So that may be what you want to do. But if you don't want to have that much tension, you can just move it just around here. Now, another thing that may potentially help us is just put a blocker here. So let's we can try with a rock to see how it looks like. So what's happening here when I when I see this scene, I'm seeing like okay, I have this line here, and I have this line, I have this line, but here when whenever I look back, there's nothing really bouncing back to this area, and this is where we actually need a blocker. Just like something like this, that our eye can come here and go back. So what we can do is we, we can try with this with this rock just to feel how it looks like. And let's go back to our original. Okay, that's that's too much. So let's let's leave it like that. We can even try with some of these bones, like just to give you an idea what's happening. All right, so th maybe this can work. We can just move it around, put it here. And can just move it just like this. All right, uh, it can be a bong, it can be whatever. But what you will notice is that it's actually helping you to go back to your thing. Maybe this is a little bit too big. Let's just move it around. There you go. Okay. So now that you have this, now you have your blocker here and you have your stairs. And now that we because because we have more light coming from here, I think like our our thing is just looking much better. Uh, another thing you make want to try because these stair these stairs are in the center of the composition usually not a not a very good good idea i don't know if you know the rule of thirds like if you put the rule of thirds here something like that you will want your most 
important subjects around these areas. Um, in general, things that are in the middle tend to be uh, very boring unless you go for a very symmetrical composition. So what you can do is actually just rotate it around and put it here. Let's try. And just by doing that, you're already having like, uh, let's just put a pivot. Uh, let's just put it like this. Can even rotate it a little bit. Like it, 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 you can tell like the the thing is much more dynamic compared to to the one that we had before. Let's just move this thing around. This is not intersecting. This is much more dynamic, and we have a much more dynamic composition where we do have like this, and then we go here, and then we go here, and then we go here. And everything, we have our blockers here as well, so we will bounce back. Uh, probably I will just put this one down just a tiny bit. Or uh, We haven't touched the concept of grouping yet. We're going to do that in the next video. But normally you, you want to group things together like in like it's very important like when for example you are making you're putting trees or whatever and people start putting trees everywhere you may want to put it like in groups like a group in this area a group in that area and you also want to play with a little bit with the you know with the with the scale of things like maybe some of them you know a little bit a little bit smaller some of them bigger you know uh, try to play with the scale a little bit. Um, this one is, I feel like it's blocking me from from my view. So I'm just going to put it just like this. And I don't know if this one, yeah, this, this one I can also change the scale a little bit. And put it a little bit to the left so that it's not entirely in the middle between these three. You can see the distance here at the middle. We want to avoid this. Probably can put it a little bit here. And obviously, we can play with the rotation and everything. Uh, you can still put some things here, to be honest. I think this area, it's okay. We just put a material and that's it. Uh, these blocks, we, we could leave them for now. We could leave them for now, but... Just like that, I think it's uh, it's looking much more dynamic now. Let's go ahead and freeze the lights. That's uh, that's too much. Yeah, let's just keep it on zero point one. I think it was a it was a good one. All right. So the next step will be just to add some assets and some color. So we do have these assets. Uh, maybe add some material to to the landscape to just start removing all the block out feeling. Um, you can also try to put like a dead tree here. It's also, also like a really cool touch, like a like a tree, like it's like this. You know, uh, it's it sells the scale like, oh, there is a tree here. And also it will kind of help you to, you know, uh, remove the repetition of this this meshes. This, this this can also work as well. And even like this, like yeah. Also, same as this area, we don't want this to be exactly in the middle. You know, this is a little bit upper, so we are we're fine. Which means we can just move this down. All right, so uh, I think that's that's pretty much it. Hopefully, uh, it's been helpful for you guys to understand these concepts behind the scenes. Uh, it's not always 
about the technology it's not always about what feature you want to use what plugin what asset are you bringing in you know it's sometimes it's it's about your judgment your eye your ability to see things so if you found this video helpful don't forget to subscribe to watch more content like this let us know in the comments what you think about this format this coaching format where i can share with you more in-depth knowledge about uh, environment creation process in unreal engine and of course if you want to learn more from us take a look at the links in the description We've got the complete action game course and of course if you want some coaching sessions feel free to take a look at them as well so with that said i hope you you enjoyed this video if you got any questions just let me know and i will see you in the next one